Hi, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, um, but uh, uh, unfortunately, Brett Davis isn't here. Um, Brett Davis is my uh, writing student uh, at Montclair State University. <laughs> and th thank you. Uh, and he, uh, he sent me an email saying that he was going to be doing a show at Paste, and he knew that I'd love to go to Barnes & Noble and take the little CD out of the magazine back in the day. <laughs> so I came here to support him, but he sent me a text saying that he wouldn't make it, so I told the people that are putting on this uh, uh, taping performance uh, that uh, I, I was Brett Davis um, because I couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk to an intelligent crowd. Um, and I apologize in advance for uh, the, uh, the, the trickery, but uh, I'll tell you a few things about myself, and I think you'll find I'm a, a perfect substitute. <clears throat> um, my name is John Gentle. Uh, like I said, I'm an adjunct poetry professor at not just Montclair, but several liberal arts colleges all across New Jersey. Thank you. Um, I'm a walker. I'm a candle enthusiast. I'm a cracker aficionado, and I'm also a, I, well, I'm a poet. Uh, I, some of you, if, if maybe you went to the Geraldine R. Dodge Poetry Festival last year. Okay. Uh, well, I, there I was selling my booklet. It's called Parkway Pleasures and Turnpike Terrors, a collection of poems about New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, and I, you know, I like to write a lot about uh, New Jersey and New York, where we are now. And um, <clears throat> if you wouldn't mind, I, I'm going to do uh, uh, some poetry for you tonight. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think we'll all have fun. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Early Sunday morning, alone on Hudson Street, looking at the towers, or where they used to be. Lives were lost and wars began, but that's not why I cry. It's that missing piece of city filled with empty sky. 9-11. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I'm not, I, I'm a poet, I'm not a, a, a comedian, but I think we could all agree that there's one worse day than 9-11 and it's 2-14, am I right? <laughs> right guys? You have any lonely hearts here? Um, I'm, a, I'm a lonely heart. Uh, I, I'm sort of a lifelong bachelor. Um, and this is a poem about that. You were not my girlfriend, but you came with me to prom. And you were at my graduation, but you were not my dad or mom. And you were with me at Russ and Daughters when I got myself a treat. This poem is for you, an ode to empty seat. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm a single guy. Uh, is anyone here in love? Three? Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I love being in love. Uh, it's... It's different for people. Sometimes it's something that happens, you know, over the course of decades. Other times it's something that uh, it could happen in mere moments. So this is a poem about that. <laughs> Next stop, New York! Yelled to the last two in the car. With her it felt like minutes, but we had gone so far. Sitting with a girl who would one day star in my dreams, she put her hand upon my knee and woke a snake inside my jeans. <laughs> I started off slow, with one and then two fingers. I didn't wash my hands for days, I wanted it to linger. <laughs> <laughs> and if kissing with tongue was like jazz, I would call it Charles Mingus. But I'm like Miles Davis when it comes to cunnilingus. <laughs> I tasted a gash, and she ran off in a dash. She left with my hash and was gone in a flash. And I was left with an empty bottle of gin and a little bit of a mess on my chin. 
on a train. Thank you. It's nice here. It's like Bill Cunningham's apartment. <laughs> um, you know, uh, is, is any here, uh, 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 you people, you all uh, engage in writing. Uh, uh, do we have some Amiri Baraka fans here? Okay, well, I'll, I'll fill you in. Amiri Baraka, he was a legendary poet laureate. Uh, he uh, died a few years ago. He was in his 80s. Uh, so, you know, you could do the math of what his life was like. Uh, he's a black guy, you know, right? Right? Um, well, anyway. I went to the Geraldine Now Dodge Poetry Festival a few years ago. I was driving into Morristown, New Jersey, and who do I see? but Amiri Baraka exiting a train. This, this man is like an idol to me, you know? Uh, I, I see myself as a version of him. And I, I said, Amiri, uh, come on, I'll give you a ride. So he, he hopped in my car and we started talking. You know, I talked about my poems about diners. And, uh, you know, he talked about his long, illustrious career. And he quickly got out of the car uh, so fast that a poem fell out of his suit jacket. So I held on to that poem. I held on to it forever, saying one day I would run into Amiri Baraka again, and I'd have him finish the poem. Fortunately, like I said, he died. So I finished it. Uh, so this, song, this, is, uh, this is called Untitled by Amiri Baraka and John Gentle. <laughs> we are beautiful people with African eyes and African noses and African imaginations. And while we sprawl in a place with gray chains, what we really want is sun. This blinding sun is as hot as a sauna. Take me back to that gal in Botswana. who dance like an African Matahari with curves more beautiful than any safari. I cannot sleep. My dreams are relentless of a maca, a maca, my Nubian empress. Thank you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm here and I was kind of expired, you know. I, I took the path over uh, and... Uh, being, you know, in this place with all these creative minds, it got me a little uh, excited. And as I was sitting alone in the back, I started scribbling notes to myself. And I wrote a poem uh, inspired by tonight. And I, I don't, I, like, I don't, I don't want to uh, embarrass myself, especially when there's a web, web, web camera and filming and stuff. <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, no, this is a new poem and uh, it, it's got, a, it's a little rough but uh, it was inspired by you folks. <clears throat> she was sitting in the front, and she had brown hair. She might have been here with a lover, but I didn't care. Because I couldn't help myself, my mind started to drift. To her, I was a stranger, but then I thought, what if? What if we left this funny show I couldn't help but ponder? What if we were meant to be? My mind started to wander. The places that I've dined alone, I dreamt that I would take her. I dreamt the smell of her perfume, us dancing to Chet Baker. <laughs> I dreamt of lighting candles. I dreamt of getting naughty. Her hair whipped back in ecstasy as I diddle with her body. <laughs> Rolling in each other's spills upon this filthy floor. My mouth just like Magellan with a vulva to explore. <laughs> I dreamt indulging in a fetish too personal to mention. Her with a rubber dog mask and a vibrant extension. I dreamt this in a carnal state of bed soaked with sweat and lobe. <sighs> and I dreamt this both post-coitus, watching game shows on the tube. <laughs> I don't believe in destiny. I have ruled out a God above. I don't believe in many things, but I do believe in love. But it can't happen unless I take that step towards the girl in the striped dress. Come here. I ask her out to dinner, and her reply is, Maybe. <laughs> yes. 
Wait, is that, a, is that a maybe or a yes? Maybe. Are you patronizing me? Uh, another maybe. Sit the fuck down. Late Monday night, I start to head home. I'm not looking forward to dinner alone. I don't have a family, no daughter, no son. The kids that work at ShopRite call me dinner for one. I have no need for plates because my dinners come in trays and I have no one's hand to hold when it's time to say grace and I'd say thanks to God, but he doesn't exist. wouldn't let nobody live a life like this. <laughs> I want to take a one-way flight right into the sun. I don't have a ticket, but I do have a gun. <laughs> 